Intel Coffee Lake. All right, this is the part two I said I'd do because part one got cut off. Well, there's been a lot more information than has come out lately. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about is, is there actually innovation in Coffee Lake? The answer to that, quite honestly, is yes. Intel is including some things in Coffee Lake that have not been seen before in a modern, uh, normal processor. And by what I mean there is not HDT, HEDT. We're talking a mainstream processor. Uh, some of the things that we should be seeing are the new cache construction or new cache constructs. We should be seeing the new ring bus design um, and quite a few other things that are going to be in this product, which we have not seen in another mainstream product. Now, I will stop and say that, yes, Intel is not as innovative on the CPU side as AMD at all. They're not. I mean, for the most part, Intel has been borrowing information, or, yeah, basically borrowing information. They've been borrowing innovation from other companies without asking. Hence the lawsuits. If you'd like to know more about that, go read. But anyway, back to Coffee Lake. Coffee Lake is innovative in that it was really an answer. It is the answer to AMD's Ryzen architecture. I'm not saying it's the end-all be-all. I'm not saying it's going to beat it. I'm not saying it's not going to beat it. But for business, and I am a business type person, it means a lot. I don't know if most people out there understand, but Intel doesn't sell very many high-end mainstream processors in comparison to the i5s and i3s. The i5s and i3s sell by the truckload, and they sell to businesses. 90% of the business computers you find are going to be running a locked i5 or a locked i3. That's what's going to be in them. And don't even get me started on the damn laptops. They pretty much all basically are i3s. It doesn't matter if it says i5 or i7 in it. It's still a damn i3. If you look at just how fast it goes... And you look at uh, what it's capable of doing. It's a damn i3. Okay. What is most interesting to me is, is we have seen this lovely little chart come out. Uh, not the one you're seeing on the screen right now, but the one out of China. This one lists the new processors, the new Coffee Lake versus Cabby Lake. Or Cabby Lake, depending on where you're from. And... Like I said, I don't really care about the i7. Why don't I care about the i7? They're not used in business. I will discuss one of the i7s on this chart, though. The 7700 versus 8700 non-K, the locked processor. Intel is touting an 18% increase in single-core performance and a 58% increase in multi-threaded performance. Well, hell, that's more than we've seen in a single processor jump in the last five years. And I mean, all they did was add a couple cores to it, change a couple things around. I guess they must be getting this new ring bus thing down. Because it is apparently got to be adding towards this. But that is an amazing, amazing, compared to what we've seen lately, jump in performance. Now, the second most interesting one on here is the one that businesses are going to use. It's the one that I guarantee you outsells every other chip in this lineup. And that is going to be the i5. What is that? The i5-8400 versus the i... Or versus the i5-7400. 29% increase in single threaded performance. 29% IPC increase. 
Where the hell did that number come from? Intel was sandbagging their old processors, their old i5s. They were purposely sandbagging them because the wattage difference didn't really go up. The clocks didn't really go up. So why in the hell would a higher threaded part or a higher core part gain IPC 29% over a four core part? Intel was screwing customers with the 7400. There is no other answer for this. The multi-threaded performance only goes up 61%. So, yeah. In a way, I think they still are screwing customers, only now they're kind of screwing them on the multi-threaded performance. The reason why I say this is this doesn't follow the same line as the i7 or really if you look down at it as the i3 the, when you look at the core the locked variants the locked i3 a 16% jump in single threaded performance and a 61% jump in multi threaded performance the i7 an 18% jump and a 58% jump why the hell is this i5 get a 29% and a 61%? It means Intel is doing things to try not to cannibalize their own processors in a given uh, relationship. Now that brings us to the actual title of this video. What the hell is Coffee Lake actually doing for Intel? It is cannibalizing every CPU Intel has out right now, except for maybe the 7900X. Yeah, you, you pretty much heard me there. It is going to cannibalize everything that they have out right now. KB Lake, no point in buying it. Uh, any old Skylake, no point in buying it. The Skylake X, both four core processors on the 299X platform that never made damn sense in the first place? No point in buying it. Definitely no point now. The six core on the two, X, uh, X299 platform? No point in buying it. Even the eight core on the X299 platform? No point in buying it. Why am I being so straightforward with this this is obvious that intel was scared to hell with ryzen that they are putting out something that is going to decimate and kill all of their other cpus on the market except for the ones that started a grand now i do have a feeling intel is going to put intel tax on these so you're looking at five 10, maybe 15% more expensive than the counterpart from KB Lake right now. I am not a fanboy to any of these companies. In fact, I could care less what any of these companies do other than help business, help customers succeed. That is what I want to see. That is what I hope for. That is the one thing that I enjoy in the tech industry is, is, well, what can business do now with the technology that we have available to us? This is finally a step in the right direction from Intel. Why is it a step in the right direction? Customers aren't really getting screwed as bad as they have in the past. I think AMD did a wonderful job with Ryzen of putting out a processor that was more in tune with where we should be right now, as far as the multi-threaded and multi-core performance goes. Versus what Intel's basically done for the last five years of sit on their ass with a thumb up it. And excuse the language, I don't mean to be vulgar. But, I am a businessman. I think six core parts should have been out four years ago from Intel. Why? Because they've had them in existence since 2010 and we're damn near at 2018. In fact, Coffee Lake was not scheduled to come out until 2018. They rolled it forward six months to come out now 
Originally, it was touted for spring of 2018. Could have been first quarter, could have been second quarter, kind of like the KB Lake release. But now we're going to see it in August. Or at least part of it in August. Intel has not been doing its job. It has not been innovating in the CPU realm. It's been innovating everywhere else. Uh, the new Thunderbolt technologies, I'm talking about Thunderbolt 3. Ah, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, I think that they're going to have to let AMD start putting it on their motherboards and stuff if they want it to ever take off. Talk about a bad decision on Intel's part. It's the whole reason why USB took off. USB took off because... They didn't charge royalty for it. Everybody could include it for free on their motherboards, regardless of whose processor it was, regardless of what in the world the board was for. I mean, you could get a little breadboard and stick a USB on there and sell it, and it didn't cost you anything in royalties. That's why it took off. That's why it became a standard. If they want Thunderbolt to become a standard, it's what they're going to have to do. And yes, that will help business also. I'm up for anything that pushes the technology forward and gets business running smoother and running better. But as I said before, you know, Coffee Lake, does it make sense? Yes. Technically, it makes sense two to four years ago. It should have been out then. Maybe not that exact processor, not on the process that it's on now. Well, possibly. Intel's been sitting on that 14 nanometer for quite a long time, and they still can't get their 10 nanometer working. Not effectively, anyway. But anyway, Coffee Lake, I believe, is going to be a wonderful thing for business. Because there's a lot of people who will not buy AMD because they don't know the name. I'm not being a fanboy, that's just being honest. And I'm definitely not a fanboy of Intel with the way they've been acting lately, which we're going to have a whole nother video on Intel's stupid business decisions coming up soon. But yes, other than that, what I really want to talk about, what I really want to tell you about is, do I think that this is going to be a good processor? Yes. Do I think it's going to be good family processors? Yes. Do I think it's going to be better than KB Lake? Yeah, Intel's pretty much guaranteed us 10%. Every revision for the last five, six years. So we're going to get that 10%. And if you look at their chart that they showed over in China, 7700K versus 7800K, 11%. So if you like what I do here, uh, and you'd like to... You know, keep watching these videos and keep hearing about this kind of stuff. Uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe. If you don't like it, uh, you know what to do. You know where the X is in the corner. You don't have to hear me again. But uh, we'll have another video coming out. I realize that this one is coming out early. I normally release on Mondays. But Intel's having their actual conference, conference on Monday to release Copy Lake. So I don't really want to fight with Intel on an Intel processor. All right. Well, until next time, have a good one.